Will they outsmart their stalker and make it out alive? Watch until the end to find out. The trespassing animal first appears on the farm of an elderly couple on the outskirts of the city. A young girl is sleeping in her room when a large shadow runs past the outside corridor. Meanwhile, her sister is returning home with her boyfriend's motorcycle, and the noises wake up her parents. When the elderly man goes outside to talk to the boyfriend because he doesn't like him, he discovers the bike tipped over and the engine still running. When the mother hears the screams, she tells the young girl to hide inside and then comes outside carrying a gun, but she is killed too. The following morning, veterinarian Lizzie is at the Zoo of Amsterdam when she receives a call that appears to be from the police station, asking for her assistance in identifying animal traits. When Lizzie arrives at the crime scene, she is greeted by Brinkers, the lead police officer. Due to the overnight rain, the police discovered several bodies, but not any footprints. Nobody believes Lizzie, who has a strong suspicion that a man-eater lion is responsible for the incident. The following day, three golfers are competing in a wide open field when Hendrik, one of them, makes a mistake and loses the ball, which he then searches for in a bush. The other two are arguing while they are standing in the bushes when all of a sudden, something appears and grabs the second man. The only thing he knows for sure is that some animal was at fault because it happened so quickly. The two survivors search for the third and discover a blood trail across the green field. Brinkers and Lizzie arrive, and this time it's a confirmation. There are lion footprints. Brinkers is shocked and informs police chief Mr. Zomberg of the situation. Mr. Zomberg then calls a press conference to inform the public of the lion threat and urges people to remain indoors unless necessary. The following morning, Lizzie tells Dave that she has called Jack Delarue, a skilled hunter from England, despite the chief's plans to do otherwise. By 6 o'clock in the evening, police leave and lock the Vondel Park, and the hunter carries out his plan there. He places some foothold traps with nails, a remote-controlled speaker that emits specific lion roars, bait made of deer heads, and waits in a tent nearby. Police and members of the media, including Brinkers, Dave, and Martin, are on guard outside the park gate as a helicopter tracks from above. The hunter hears the lion's true roar after much waiting and the playing of mating calls of the speaker, but it is only then that he sees his son smashing that like and subscribe button! <laughs> oh goodness no, in all seriousness, he sees his son who is equipped with a hunting rifle. As soon as he hears the roar, his son runs and the hunter returns to his tent without realizing that the lion is nearby. The lion attacks him and pulls out his entrails while he, still alive, orders his son to shoot it. But the son panics and falls into the foothold. Police rush into the park after being informed by the helicopter and discover the two men dead. But the lion was nowhere to be seen. The lion has boarded the tram that stops at that part of the park. When a young boy calls the lion that has crept into the tram's empty back end a cat, everyone's interest is piqued. The tram moves through the center of the city while there is a bloodbath inside, and people outside can see the carnage as the terrified passengers scramble for safety from the lion's approach. Jack arrives on the flight the next morning, but Brinkers is surprised to see him in a wheelchair. Jack has high speed, excellent maneuverability, and reach across slopes thanks to his unique chair, which is battery-powered and has a bottom that resembles a tank's caterpillar tracks. He arrives at the location where the hunter and his son were killed, and looks for trails. Although an army of men surround the forest and approach from all sides, the lion manages to remain hidden among the bushes. There are some amateur traps set by enthusiasts waiting to kill the lion, including a pit dug into the ground, tripwires, and bombs. When some of the army men fall into the traps and detect the movement of the strangers, they open fire killing many of their comrades, including the civilians. Now that a formal declaration of a citywide emergency looms over the chief's head, Brinkers is dispatched to find Jack in his hotel room. Jack determines the direction of the wind, positions himself outside in the open without a cage or a helicopter patrolling above, and soon turns off his radio for total silence. He occasionally keeps making sounds like wild animals, like buffalo, to lure the lion. Suddenly, he feels movement, but it turns out to be a dog, belonging to a woman whining outside the park that her dog was left inside, seemingly walking her dog. The dog is shooed away by Jack using his whistle, but then the lion appears. He shoots the lion multiple times as he goes after him, 
but he snaps and turns on his radio to call the team that is waiting outside the park's gates. Since Jack appeared surprised and implied risks that he had not anticipated, Lizzie is concerned. She decides to assist him. Finally, Jack follows the lion tracks to the medical department of Amsterdam University, where he meets Lizzie. He hands her a gun, and the two enter the university. They discovered several bodies, as well as a hole in the wall, indicating the lion forced its way inside. Lizzie pulls out her phone to try to send a message to the police team as they quietly search for it in the lobby. The lion unexpectedly emerges from the side walls. When he attacks him, Lizzie shoots it and then hides beneath a sofa. Jack shoots the lion, deflecting it in his direction and onto the auditorium. He then waits outside the exit door, gun in hand, but the lion has vanished. While trying to use a dead security guard's radio to communicate her location to the police team, Lizzie spots the lion and hides again. At that point, she is attacked by the lion as calls on her radio reveal her location. She locates her gun and hides in a room, but the door is unstable from the lion's repeated slams, so she attempts to escape by tearing open the roof tiles. Looking for the lion on the other side, Jack comes across a corridor and comes face to face with the lion, who charges at him. He turns around, but the lion pounces on his unharmed leg, causing him to fall and drop both his chair and gun. With the thought that the lion would follow him there, he drags himself to the nearby morgue, ties his badly bleeding leg with clothing, and fastens the door handles with his belt. The lion quickly kicks open the door, follows the trail on the ground, misses the critically injured Jack hiding behind the side table, and enters that room in search of the desired leg. The lion quickly passes out after Lizzie sprays toxic gas on its face and stealthily locks the door, but not before it partially tears her mask. As the gas fills her lungs, Lizzie is unable to open the door. As the police and media approach the university building from the outside, Dave enters intrepidly. He follows the destruction and noise into that room, where Jack, despite nearly passing out, manages to point him in the direction of Lizzie's chamber. However, the lion soon follows and attacks Dave while he is pinned to the ground with only a chair between them. Lizzie gathers all of her strength to drive a nail, killing it at last. When Lizzie discovers that the locket made of lion's tooth that Jack once wore so dearly has Lizzie engraved in it, she collapses from her feet, exhausted both physically and emotionally. The city is once again peaceful the following morning. Lizzie expresses her gratitude to Dave for opening the door just in time to save her life. Then, there is a slight roar, followed by some leaves rustling in the nearby bush. Subscribe for more videos like this, and turn on the notifications so you never miss any of them.